Welcome back. In the last video, we cover multiple re linear regression with the stats model. Uh, in this video, we're going to go into feature extraction as well as trying to locate features uh, that is important as well as identifying features that's not important for uh, the purpose of our modeling. So in the first tool that we use um, is the correlation coefficient. It is a really useful tool to, die, to identify collinearity between predictors. So let's just run this. So what I did do is to, I just set my um, pandas uh, display float format to four decimals only, and we store the uh, correlation, correlation matrix into the variable called core underscore matrix. So when you actually run this, a um, couple of things, it's a little bit clouded uh, for our eyes to be able to actually pick up all the details. So what I've done here is that I have uh, intentionally masked those uh, with the correlation matrix that's less than 6, 0 0.6, sorry. If it's less than 0 0.6, I set it to 0. The, with the intent of only highlighting those with uh, greater than 0 0.6 correlation coefficient. Again, this is not so easy, but it's better than before. So you have 0.72 here, 0.62 here, 0.66 here, and also a minus 0.76 here. Um, so that's really what I'm looking out for. Uh, of course, I did show you guys last in the last video that uh, we can use heat map to actually um, help us to visualize. Uh, again, what we did plotting here is the core matrix which is this one here. Uh, now the color is a little bit undesirable, but that's okay. Uh, it actually does what we want it to do. All the zero are set to the color teal. And you can see the blue. Now I don't know what you call this color, um, light brown. Um, you can see the 0 0.6, 0 0.72. These are all the uh, so-called variables with very high correlation with other variables. So Indus, for example, is highly correlated to LSTAT, NTAX, uh, negatively correlated to distance, uh, highly, highly correlated to age, as well as the uh, pollution index or the nitric oxide. Okay, so um, this is one way to actually do that using the correlation matrix. Uh, from here, you can also see another 1.91 here, which is really, really high uh, between tax as well as RAD. Okay, so detecting collinearity, there's another way to do it is using eigenvector. Um, we use the NumPy's linear algebra, eigen decomposition uh, of the correlation matrix. And we just plot that out and let you see in terms of those with uh, so-called significance. Now, 8, 10, and 11 here is um, near to zero or very small compared to others. So this is the eigenvalues. You can see that this eigenvalue is really, really small. Now, the small value like this uh, basically represent that there is a presence of collinearity in, um, in this specific uh, index here. So we dig into the actual eigenvectors decomposition. Uh, this is the eigenvalues. We are looking at the eigenvectors itself. And we run this and looking at specifically and sorting it out basically, look at those with very high loading compared with the rest. From here, we can see that index 2, 8, and 9 are those with the highest um, loading, meaning they contribute the most to this low value of number 8 eigenvalues. So we print out the names of these as Indus, RID, as well as tax. Just to refresh your memory of what Indus, RID, and tax are, so come back here looking at the description. Indus is basically proportion of non-retail business acres per town. Um, RID is index of accessibility to the highways and also tax is full value of property tax rate per $10,000. And we can see that these are the factors that are causing the multi-collinearity problem in essence. Now, just to revisit the feature importance as well as the extraction, a um, couple of things from the so-called um, coefficient that we have generated. Well, let me just get to this page here. Uh, from the coefficient, there are a couple of things that you can observe. One is the direction. This is 36. Of course, that's the intercept. 
Nox here is minus 17, which is rather large. Uh, and the highest positive value is RM at 3.8. Okay, so um, you can tell from the couple of things you do need to check or is one is the direction of the coefficient, which we just did. Second one is the impact of the variable or the factor on the overall model here. Yes, the direction of the coefficient is important, but how significant is it to the overall scheme of things or the model itself? There are two ways to do this. The first one is that we standardize the variable to identify key features. Now understand that um, the distribution of the actual so-called features itself are quite different. Uh, let me just show you. So let me just uh, pull this out. Okay, so from here, uh, you can see that text is rather large. So what we can do is plot the histogram of um, text. And you can see that the distribution is from 200 to 700. If we plot the similar distribution of, let's just say, uh, the small number uh, cast, we know is that it's a binary, is that the zero or one, we can actually try Nox. And again, you can see that this is significantly smaller from 0.4 to 0.9. And obviously, text is going to drown out Nox. Uh, and um, the other thing that we need to bear in mind is the actual distribution itself. Uh, so hence the reason why we, you know, to perform 0.2, which is the impact of the variable uh, on the actual overall model itself, we need to actually standardize the variable. Uh, but before we do the actual standardized size, standardization, uh, what I will do is actually just run a basic linear model, basically as our control, and uh, let you have a look at what the coefficient of the individuals look like. We did this earlier, and you can see that NOx is really large, H is really, really small, as is B here. Now, what happens when we actually standardize it? We're using scikit-learn pre-processing standard scalar, uh, and also using the make pipeline, just so that we allow us to just tweak a little bit. In this case, just to scalar or standardize it. Um, so the standard scalar, we instantiate it using uh, and store it in this, uh, or instantiate and call it scalar. And from the make pipeline, we just provide scalar uh, model. Uh, so here we have standard coefficient uh, linear regression. Okay, and we'll run that and we fit our model and we are extracting so we run the fitting of the model itself and then we extract the coefficient all right and we along with the column itself and we actually sort in accordance to the significance of the coefficient which is similar to what we did earlier here so let's just print it out and notice there's a distinct difference here notice nox is no longer the top Okay, as it was here before. Well, we did mention that NOx um, is very small, so because of that, it actually magnified the coefficient. Um, what you can see here in terms of the significance, LSTAT is actually the most significant, and H is the least significant here. So that's really one way that you can actually identify the key features is by standardizing your variables, converting them to minus three to plus three. Uh, through that standardization, basically all of the values is now between the range of minus 3 and plus 3. That is really important because from that you can tell, you know, as, because they are now on the same scale, you can see which one actually explain the variability better than the rest. The next step, the other method that you can use is to use R squared to identify key features. Uh, how do you do that? You compare the R square of the model, uh, of the model that you have against R square of the model without a feature. So comparing have and have not, a uh, significant change in R square basically signify, signify that the feature is really important. Okay, again, we import R square. We run the full model itself, which is everything uh, being provided and gives us the actual uh, R squared of 0 0.74. 
Now, since we already identify L stat is the most significant coefficient because uh, after standardization, we'll run it without L stat. Notice that I dropped it off and see what happened to the R squared. Notice the R squared dropped quite significantly, significantly from 0.74 down to 0.68. Now, if we run the same without H, now remember H is the one that has the least um, in terms of contribution to the model itself. And let's see what happened to the um, R squared itself. Notice that, well, literally almost no change. And uh, you can see now that H, as we have correctly identified from here, after you take it out from the actual model itself, it are, basically R squared didn't change much at all. So from that exercise, you can tell that L stat is really important, whereas H is not really all that important as well at all in the model. Okay, so that's really the end of this exercise and this tutorial, what I'd like you to do um, is to actually get your hands dirty and try this out yourself. What I'd like you to do um, as an exercise, this should be quite a simple one, is to try and drop off DIS, distance, and also RM, and see how does it actually individually uh, contribute towards the R square itself. So this the exercise I'd like to leave you to try it out. And when you come back, I'll summarize the lesson. Welcome back. So how did you find that exercise? I hope that has been useful. Uh, it should be quite straightforward. Really, it's just dropping off a variable and recalculate that cell again to see you know, or what the R square change looks like. So in this lesson, in essence, what we've done is actually utilize the correlation matrix to identify collinearity between predictors. We mentioned that for the purpose of data science, it's not so important, uh, you know, in terms of the so-called collinearity um, does exist in the model itself, ultimately, because they are um, self-contained, um, in terms of it doesn't actually affect the prediction itself. So that's why we don't, we're not so concerned about the presence of collinearity. But it's good to know because um, for a start, you understand, you know, where, uh, who, which, which two variables or which three variables have collinearity problem. And also from a statistics background, um, it actually it pays to actually pay attention to that as well uh, to see how it actually impact on your model. So that's the first thing that we did. Second thing that we did is that we also use uh, eigenvectors as well as value to detect collinearity. And the third thing that we did is really um, identify which feature is the most important and which one is the least important. A um, couple of ways that we did it is via standardization of the variable itself. From standardization, we can tell that uh, which variable is you know, which few variables are significant, which few are not significant. The other method too that we use to identify those key features that are important is we use R square. Uh, again, we just basically iteratively deduct or remove a feature and see how it impacts on the overall R square itself. I hope you find this lesson useful. Um, what we are going to move into in the next video is basically try to implement an ordinary least square regression okay but the difference this time is we are using gradient descent a really powerful tool for estimation of our model i look forward to seeing you in the next video